And I know I might think that Dublin is the centre of the world, but somebody told me it's actually not, which is weird. Apparently there's other places out there too. And to prove it to me, we're actually going to head off to the Midlands of Ireland to talk to our fab regional correspondent, Sarah Jane Foster. Jen's Regional Roundup. Yes, she's on the line. Sarah Jane, how's it going? I'm so good, Jennifer. How are you this morning? You're pumped for today, aren't you? I am absolutely <laughs> buzzing for it. Loads of good news stories from the Midlands. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so happy we have to go to the Midlands for good news. And thanks for bringing them to us. Um, so tell me about Tulu, uh, Mackie. She's someone we're going to be hearing a lot more about pretty soon, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. So you probably remember her on the New Year's Eve countdown show. So she sang the N17 song. She was absolutely brilliant like she shot to fame but I was actually speaking to Tulu a couple of days ago and she was just so genuine on the phone but it was so funny because she actually describes herself as being quite shy but she was speaking to me on the phone like no problem like she was telling me all about her life you know she was in Nigeria till she was five and then she moved over here to Tullamore and she joined the choir when she was about eight years of age and she just knew that music was her way forward in life and then she ended up going to uh, NUI in Galway wow. studying psychology she got her degree there and then she was in Trinity studying there and she was like do you know what I actually need to focus all of my energy on my music and do you know what I think she was dead right because you can't like you can't do everything you have to focus your energy on one thing if you really really want it and she's asked to bring out a new single called You Are Enough and they filmed this song down in the, the music video of it in Tullamore and like just the locals were so supportive to her and she really really enjoyed it the video is absolutely fabulous lovely and she had a bit of a, a rocky start did she was she in direct provision uh, when she first came to Ireland did I hear that right she was yeah she absolutely was but I mean she settled into Ireland so so well and she absolutely loved it um, do you know she she really loves Tullamore and she considers Tullamore as her home of course and I suppose joining yes. the choir was was a huge step in in just giving her something to focus on as a kid and obviously give her love for music she's a phenomenal singer can we have a listen to her I have a little clip here do you want to have a yeah, listen definitely. here we go you are enough I love that. Uh, such a positive Both song as well. Uh, yeah, so look out for this one. She's going to be on to big things pretty soon. Definitely. I'm sure of it. Now, what's this about a fella at Mullingar wanting to plant a million trees? Oh, my good God. So, Adrian <laughs> Murphy, yeah. you would absolutely love him, Jennifer. You that's into the hike life. Are you still hike life in it? At I the am. I'm into the hike life. Uh, the, Ooh, the no it. snow or rain would put me off. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so into it because there's nothing else to do. Uh, so, what's Too he doing? Right. Is he really planting a million trees or where is he at? Yeah. So, listen, he's at 250,000 at the minute. So, he Not started... Bad. Yeah, he started planting, I think it was back in 2006 in Castletown Gagan in County Westmeath. And like 250,000 trees, that's insane. So I was speaking to him over the last couple of days and he plans to plant one million trees in his lifetime. Unbelievable. Good on And I was like, yeah, I know. I was kind of like, how are you, like, what's the plan? How are you going to do this? Yeah. And what he's going to do is, so every tea, coffee and smoothie that you buy from his coffee shop here in Mullingar at the Forge, he's going to plant a tree for every coffee, tea and smoothie that you buy, which is unbelievable. So the, he owns a coffee shop called The Forge um, yeah. and people go in there and then he plant. Where does he plant? Like, does he have a massive back garden? Where are these trees going? Do we know? Oh, my God. You should see his garden. Like, it's absolutely huge. So it's actually out in Castletown Gagan in Mount Druid. Um, it's kind of like an alternative wedding venue. It's mm -hmm. so, so quirky. It's really cool. Um, the likes of Ellie Goulding has been there. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a really, like, his energy is just, it's so infectious. Like, he's so calm. He's so ambitious. And, like, so I actually went out to Castletown Giga where he um, has planted the trees. I was there last year. And it's just, like, he has so many ambitions for it and so many plans for it. But I think, you know, planting the trees 
like is is unbelievable and the like his ambition to plant one million trees is just it's it's so so good it's so such a great goal i mean just to say yeah. okay what have you achieved in your life well i've made millions i've had a successful business yeah. i've also well, have done that too oh well, even hopefully he will <laughs> but to turn around and say well i've actually contributed to the planet and planted yeah, a million trees for all your benefit is quite incredible yeah. and an amazing goal to, to have really yeah. is he a real oh, ego a uh, guy is he big into the environment he must be oh yeah hugely like he, he really really is but apparently it's tree planting season at the minute so he's educating me on all of this and apparently the trees are coming today so I think he's going to get right into it from, from today um, the minute they arrive he's going to get planting them so I think we're going to do a bit of a documentary on him doing this because I think it did, definitely deserves it because like everyone's so into the into the planet at the minute, and uh, I think people will really like and appreciate Phenomenal. what he's doing. Yeah, good. Yeah, on. What's his definitely. name again? Adrian Murphy. So he's Adrian. originally from Tyrone, and he married a beautiful Mullingar woman. Deirdre. Good on him. Good on yeah, him, absolutely. Adrian and no. Deirdre. Fair play to you. Now, I speaking of uh, romance and couples, I hear you caught up with a couple who know how to keep the flames of romance going for a very very long time. <laughs> who are who are these people, and what's their secret? Yeah, oh my God. So I was actually ca- catching up with uh, Michael and Agnes Hogan. So they're from Mullingar. They were married 60 years last year. Like, oh my God, wow. I'm only on this planet half of that time and they're <laughs> married. <laughs> Good. Oh, now listen, I have a little clip uh, of Michael talking about, I think it's their first date. Have a listen to this. Yeah, yeah I'd never forget the first date. We rented the pictures and we came back and we're standing outside in the porch in the door and we were standing there and the next thing this fella walked up to us and he said so this is it and he wasn't talking to me he was talking to Agnes do you know what she done she did date with this other guy once the other end of the road and she did date with me the other end so if I didn't turn up she, was, she wasn't stuck you see <laughs> <laughs> Good woman, Agnes. Well, she picked the right fella because she's with them 60 years. Did they tell you what this, sure. the secret is? Can, can they divulge that or have they? What's the secret to 60 years of marriage? Yeah, that's what I was asking him. So what Michael reckons is that he said that his family kept them together. They always had something to look forward to with them and they were always so, so busy. And he just said, like, nowadays, they, um, they, they, don't, they didn't have the opportunities back then that we do have now. So, for example, he was saying, like, people just go to college now and then they go traveling. And he was just like, back then, it was just a matter of, like, you know, get married and having your family and working hard to keep your family. Um, it's like it's changed so, so much, you know. Um, I did ask him about Tinder. I was like, have you ever heard about Tinder? And he, like, he has grandkids, so he definitely has. So I was knocking a bit of crack out of him with that, you know. But, like, 60 years married is just phenomenal. Yeah, so then I was asking, what is he going to be doing for Valentine's? I was like, you definitely know what to do at Valentine's if you're with her for 60 years. He was so funny, actually. I said to him, you know, I was talking about his wedding day and stuff. He was like, yeah, the 4th of February, 1961. And he remembered the date. And I was like, my goodness. I was like, most lads don't remember the date. You know, you're married for a while now. I'm basically married. And like, you know what they're like. They forget everything. Uh, every date, yeah. It's, yeah. It, they just forget. Well, uh, to be honest with you, Sarah Jane, I'm just as bad with dates. Yeah. We don't really sell celebrate you know anniversaries we're going to celebrate valentine's this year because yeah. there's nothing else to do yeah that's uh, right are you You're going to so celebrate right. are you going to celebrate this year the valentine's day I actually love a fuss. Like, I am Do living you? for Valentine's this year. Yeah, definitely. So, Timmy's going to cook, even though he always cooks. So, I'm making it out to be like, oh, this is so special he's cooking. But he's going to cook dinner for me. And, um, is his name yeah, Timmy, like, did you say? Yeah, his name is Timmy. Tell me about Timmy. Okay, so Timmy. Myself and Timmy, actually, mm-hmm. we met you up at Dancing uh, with the Stars. Roughly this time last year, we knocked great crack out of, out of you. We were there supporting Lottie Ryan and Grania. <laughs> <laughs> now was he into dancing or did you have to drag him no funny enough I think we had just got engaged so we got engaged in December 2019 in New York and then this was like by February 2020 yes that would be right okay. and I remember James Patrice we were actually in the audience and James Patrice came up and he brought me out onto the dance floor 
and he asked Timmy all about the engagement. Oh, <laughs> so, so funny. <laughs> we had such a good night. Like, I'd do anything to go back up there that, oh, you know, Jesus. to see the show live. Do you know you? what happened, Sarah Jane? Because me, yeah. myself and Nikki Byrne are backstage waiting to go on. Obviously, James yeah. Patrice is doing his thing and we watch <laughs> on monitors every person he brings up and we laugh yeah. our heads and we have great crack watching him bring Were up. Were you laughing at me dancing? Absolutely. <laughs> we laugh at everybody dancing and then sometimes we come out we join you. This all goes on before the live show goes yeah. out. Uh, that is crazy. Well, fair play to you, Timmy. He's a cook. Do, do marry him quick. That's Absolutely. all I'm going to say. Because <laughs> my fella cooks for me and it's a game changer, I have to say. Now, last yeah. time, uh, you're on, we were talking about this amazing Irish singer, another one, Chantal Padden, who's on The Voice UK at the moment. Yeah. Um, before he gives an update, let's have a listen to her phenomenal voice. Here we go. <laughs> God, the talent oh, busting out stunning. of the Midlands is incredible, yeah. isn't it? Oh, she's absolutely amazing. How's she like, getting she on? So good. She records all of her stuff in the Midlands. She's absolutely amazing. So I caught up with Chantelle and she was telling me all about her uh, blind audition and went out on air a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh my goodness, like imagine her nerves. Mm -hmm. And like all of, you know, the four chairs waiting to turn around. But she said that she actually didn't hear the buzzer. You know the way we can hear the buzzer on the on the TV show? Yeah. She actually didn't hear it. And she was just seeing the two boys turn around. So Ollie Murs and Will I Am turned around. And I was like, oh, I'd say Ollie Murs nearly fell off the chair when he turned around and seen her. Because she's absolutely stunning. But like, so Ollie and Will I Am turned around. And I was like, how do you choose between Ollie and Will I Am? And I would have expected her to choose Will I Am because she actually sang a Miley Cyrus song on the show, which was hugely popular on TikTok because of the high notes in it and it's so difficult to sing. And she actually brought it up a key, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. And then she said the older people would actually appreciate the, the lyrics of the song. But because Will I Am is actually currently working with Miley Cyrus, I, I, da- I just I just thought she would have went with him. Sure, and I with Ollie. Why- yeah, I was like, so why did you go with Ollie? And what she said, like it was very tact, like her thinking is very tactical mm-hmm. in the sense of Ali Murs, you know, he really promotes his um, his acts. Whereas Will I Am, you know, she said that Ali also said about her that he wants her to just be her, and she said Will I Am might strip her of that, and she was a bit worried about that. But like, I think she's going to do unbelievable, and she's she's very realistic in the sense of she knows she's going to use the platform of the Voice UK to has, get her where she wants to be. Has uh, have the English claimed her as their own, which they tend to yeah. do with? <laughs> Oh my god, they actually are doing that. She was she was saying that they're actually so surprised with the press that she's getting in the UK because some of the UK acts are not getting even like their local newspapers to write about them and even the English people are writing about Chantelle. So I'd say they're gonna claim her as her as They her do own, that. They do. And that's okay. They're they're that's different. okay because we know she's ours and listen, we will always promote her and talk about her here. She is phenomenal. Uh, Sarah Jane Foster, thanks a mail for filling us in on, on the vibes from the Midlands. Uh, we'll talk to you soon and tell Timmy <laughs> I said hello, will you? I will, absolutely, Jennifer. Thanks, <laughs> See you later. <laughs>